Hello everybody and welcome back to another blind commentary of uh, Overlord. As you can see, um, there's the outro time and yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see in this episode what exactly will happen as a new player has entered the game. There is probably, it's probably a guild. I'm, it's not yet exactly made sure. I'm sure it will be in a few seconds. But um, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how exactly the interaction between them and um, the um, Lord Moonga will go. It's going to be quite thrilling to see this. So let us start with the episode proper. <laughs> this is interesting that they are painting these what will probably become adversaries to our main character in a very, very positive light. It certainly makes the whole uh, moral question quite a bit more muddled. And that is actually pretty good. It It is good to have humanizing moments for the opposition as well. At least I presume that this will be the opposition. I am not exactly sure about that yet. But it it's pretty likely. It is actually concerning that he's now using this mirror of remote viewing. It's actually pretty interesting to see him utilize, as I had hoped that he would utilize more magical items that he has uh, he has in his possession. So it's going to be interesting to see if there's any other artifacts that he will actually use and whether and how effective artifacts he can actually create himself because he is a high level mage so he should be able to create quite a wide variety of items that will be probably rather useful in their mission to secure the tower of Nazarek. so yeah it's at the really it's pretty cool to see this kind of new artifact it, and it also shows a few things about the main character as well although now i I think I'm just repeating myself from the previous episode. Yeah, <laughs> This is actually pretty damn brutal. I'm actually rather surprised that they are showing this unabashedly without any censoring because it's actually kind of gory. I was not expecting this to actually get kind of that dark immediately. And this also bleeds into what I was talking about in the few episodes, in the first episode I think I talked about, how... Or at the very least, actually, I think I talked about it in the second episode as well, which is the fact that you need to set up, um, you need to set up uh, differences in kind to create um, um, contrast. So yeah, it's a, a very after the uh, le levity of the previous two episodes, this kind of um, cruel reality is actually kind of good uh, in very heavy contrast to those. <laughs> also, kind of um, this happened, this was mentioned a second ago, but the fact that Sebas is actually a kind of a reflection of the human that created him, um, touch apparently in this situation. Um, it's actually like I wanted to happen that uh, some of the NPCs would be a reflection of the human players that created them, which is actually, or at the very least, I feel like that. Um, that is the implication here that the ref the brief mo glimpse that um I the. Momonga had of um, touch behind the Sebas is kind of the reflection that Sebas is reflecting the human player who created him. At the very least, that's what I think. And that's pretty cool. That's something that I quite like. Yeah, 
ゲート<laughs> Oh my god, he just casually cast a ninth level spell. That's actually kind of ridiculous that he cast such a high level of skill. At least I'm thinking that the tier, tiers of the spells kind of go hand to hand what they are in D&D, so I'm kind of taking cues from that. Also, I just paused on a really brutal scene. That's quite something. <laughs> but yeah. この世界の人間たちに私の得意とする資料系その中でも好意の第9位会員。ナイ、that's。This <laughs> puts so many things in perspective because my friend um the one who has recommended this series to me wanted to immediately create a necromancer after watching the series. So this puts quite a few things in perspective because I think he was wanting to create something very close to um, uh, the Lord Momonga here. And uh, to his credit, even though we are playing with Pathfinder and that doesn't exactly allow for very, the exact same spells, it goes pretty close. Even that spell, Grass Part, has something close to it. So talking about necromancy, that's pretty badass. That's actually pretty damn cool. And that's I think this was the main thing that he wanted to come after. Just raising dead people because necromancy is pretty cool. Even though it's somehow pretty dark, it's actually kind of cool. この村を襲っている騎士を殺せ。かしこまりました。これは治癒の薬だ。早く飲むんだ。Now, I know that healing spells work quite effectively, but there's one thing that bothers me whenever this is shown in anime, when healing is shown. And that is that it repairs clothes as well, which really doesn't make any sense when healing spells are used. Usually the, the clothes should stay damaged. I know it's a nitpick, but it's something that bothers me quite a bit. So... <laughs> So he actually wants to go by the name Aunt's Old Gown. That's actually pretty interesting. Now, now I suppose I should start calling him Aunt after this. So he's actually... He's saving people. He's act, act, actually acting like an actual protective lord. So yeah, he, I want to see him actually be the good guy. Even though he's necromancer. Although he's magic caster just in general, so he's not just limited to necromancy. Well, whatever the case may be, um, I want to see him actually be the good guy, so let's see him save the village. They are really going all out with the gore now, aren't they? That's, again, with the timing of the pauses. This is magnificent. Just look at that. He's just completely cut in twain. That's pretty damn brutal, if I'm being completely honest. Which, I'm fine with this level of gore. It's just completely normal. I've seen much worse. Yeah, much worse. Um, <clears throat> But... 
it's surprising that they are actually showing gore to this level. It's impressive. Jesus. So, talking about brutality, holy hell, that's pretty damn gruesome. Just completely just pounding him, strike after strike. It's... Yeah, that's really quite something. I want, I want Ainz to come in and be like, that's enough! It's my turn to have some fun. I mean, test out my abilities. Pretty interesting. Actually, this actually goes very much into psychology, so it would have been really kind of a quite odd that he would actually do this without any cool good reason, even though he had a pretty obvious reason he wanted to test out his powers. But th that's obviously something that he cannot divulge into the commoners. So, um, it's pretty, actually pretty interesting that there's some psychology work as well into this. I hope that kind of aspect will remain in the show, that uh, human psychology will actually remain a, comp uh, a more present part, because being a lord requires you to know some of the human psychology and how human mind works. So it would be pretty cool to see him, you know, kind of theorize of how to ru actually lord over a people. しかし、あの姉妹が怯えていたのは俺の骸骨の顔だった。金として actually like this aspect quite a bit that Ainz is actually going around and asking for information, since information is power, and he clearly knows this. It's actually pretty cool to see him, you know, barter for information, or, you know, just ask for information, just in general. So it's actually pretty cool to see this aspect worked into the show quite, quite a lot. Yeah, it has, now he's actually just going and asking people for information, so yeah, it's... It's pretty cool to see this. This actually also highlights a pretty good aspect of the main character, Ainz, because it also highlights that he is actually considering all of the aspects of this, as he was questioning that he was actually kind of... Um, slandering or he was kind of uh, regretting that he left let all of the enemy knights go instead of just asking uh capturing one of them and um for interrogating him for information it also makes him seem to be very clearly very intelligent which is you know it was already obvious that he was intelligent but it's pretty good to really stop to reinforce that fact so yeah it's pretty good でもありません。それより他の話を聞かせてはいただけないでしょうがためには彼らの反感を買わないよう不必要な殺戮は避けるべきだ。それと大義名分も必要だな。どこかの国を後ろ盾にしておくのが望ましいが。はあ。This is just this is just reinforcing. This is just so much reinforcement of the fact that Ainz is actually working carefully and he works with a just cause so that he wants to actually he wants to make himself appear as benevolent as possible which is pretty actually pretty cool to see in the main character it's, it, it's fulfilling exactly what I want out of him to be a benevolent ruler which is yeah he's certainly appearing that way and that's exactly what I want so yeah I'm pretty satisfied with the main character so far. Oh, yeah. 
撤収する私はアインズールゴーンこの村が襲われておりましたので助けに来たマジックキャスターです<笑>この村を救っていただき、感謝の言葉もない。最初。This is actually pretty surprising that they are not necessarily completely opposed. They are possibly not an opposing side to this conflict, which would be pretty interesting to see. At the very least, this kind of diplomatic exchange will be interesting to see how this will actually play out. So yeah, it's going to be. It's a key moment. 周囲に複数の人影村を囲むような形で接近しつつあります、うん oh, for goodness sake, it's over. Well, that's that dealt with. It's yeah, it's a pretty it was a quite an interesting episode at the very least i quite liked it because it actually dealt into the psychology of signs yeah i suppose i'm gonna have to call him Eins from now on it actually dealt in in quite a uh well delved into quite a bit of his psychology and how his mode operandi is and how he wants to operate um in a public sense it was pretty obvious that he is at the very least very intelligent and he wants to keep up good diplomatic uh, image of himself to be a benevolent, well, not yet ruler, but at the very least a uh, powerful, a benevolent third factor in, the, in this um, situation. So it certainly was pretty interesting to see that, and I quite liked how thoughtful and how generally how intelligent he appears to be, and how introspective he, at the very least, also is, and how much he considers all of his actions and his appearances to matter. So, yeah, it's pretty like for example it's also pretty cool to see the world being built quite a bit we are gaining the information at the same time as he is which is something very cool something really quite interesting to see because and it also makes sense because then because Einz doesn't know it so while he's getting the information so are we and that's actually a pretty good way of building the world by having him be completely new to the world so yeah it's pretty cool and it's pretty interesting and i quite liked it so yeah it also um we got to see some of the magical items a bit more which is something that also becomes in the world building aspect of the, the story quite a bit and i also quite liked that and i would like to see more of that and of course i liked seeing just generally magic because it is very reminiscent of D and D, and that is something that I'm a pretty huge fan of. So it's pretty cool to see that, and it's really entertaining. So yeah, I'm all I'm just very satisfied with the series so far, and it has been quite entertaining and pretty intriguing at the same time. And it has also been quite um has been a pretty good steady drip of uh, drip feed of information at the same time so yeah the show does a pretty good job at pacing itself and changing the atmosphere also because it was not very jovial in this episode it was actually quite gory which came as a pretty big surprise but i'm pretty satisfied with I i'm fine with it being gory because that's just reality of life but I'm pretty surprised by that, and actually, it's in very good st stark contrast to the previous two episodes. So it's actually all all be pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I'm just very satisfied with the story so far. That being said, I thank you all very much for watching. I hope to see you in the future. Have a great day and stay awesome. That move out. Thank you very much for watching.